Hello guys, here's Madame OK and today I want to explore with you how to create the atmospheric perspective landscape. So what we want to start, um, well, we will use the heels. So let's go with first layer. Very, very wavy. Right. Another, another uh, set of mountains, another one key, I don't know, hill, mountain, and another one here. And then we can say we will have a nice, beautiful sky there, or maybe even another, another set here. So you see one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So we have to make the decision for the color that we want to use. Again, before we'll start, I want to make you aware that I created the, uh, the edges here that will later create for me the frames using the masking tape. What you need to have watercolors, of course, or if you want to use acrylics, very fine. You can do this uh, as well. Um, your brushes and lots of lots of optimism because we will have lots of lots of fun. So the brushes have to be really, really clean. Make sure that you really, really wash them well in the water. And let us start with the lightest, uh, I would say with the lightest tone, and then we'll go to the darkest one here. It's, it's simply easier to control. Um, I will use purple. So my purple color, as you can see, it's here or, he, or there, um, and I will for sure use it. So I will make sure that it's really, really light. So this, is it light? I'm not so sure. I really have to have it very, very light. Now, um, let us put it on the side here. You see, this is quite dark, but it doesn't bother me because I can move the paint easily here. See? with using the water and uh, good brush i mean doesn't need to be expensive brush make sure that you use the brush that is more acrylic or oil paint painting brush um, because it gives you more control than the regular watercolor brush now the technique that we apply here is called uh, wet on dry so that means that your uh, paper it's not wet with water absolutely not Otherwise, um, the paint will move too freely and it would not allow us to control the shape of the mountains slash hills, right? So you see that will be my lightest, lightest tone of purple that I will be using here. Now I can go to the second one and you can see here, I'm not so sure, maybe this is a little bit too dark. So again, using more water, I change the tone of my purple towards the, um, the lighter one, but still darker than the heel in the back. Now, remember, um, when you use just one color, you create so-called monochromatic painting, okay? If you would just use black and white, so that means in case of watercolors, just black color, you would call it achromatic painting, because um, uh, in the artist world, it's said that Black and white are not, there are no colors. I disagree about that, but it's my private opinion. So, okay, you can see already that those two tones are very, very different in our achromatic painting. Now, uh, not achromatic, sorry, monochromatic painting. Now I'm going to my third hill slash mountain. I don't know, you have to make the decision on your own. So you see, I'm very careful that I will not extend the tone to super, super dark, right? Remember, we still have two hills that have to be covered with the paint. So I have to give myself the room to make sure that I can use the color, I would say full strength. You see, this is too strong, much too strong. So I'm using more water and I'm moving it here. Believe me or not, um, using this uh, beautiful um, frames in the painting, just by applying masking tape, you will create fantastic, fantastic um, effect. Believe me or not, you will see it in the second, once, not in the second, well, in, let's see, half an hour when the painting will be finished, dry, I will remove the masking tape and I will show you how nicely the, your painting will be framed naturally just by having those white edges. So you see one, two, three. Do you agree that's okay? Maybe it's a little bit dark. What do you think? Could be even lighter, right? It depends how many hills we have, but because you have only two left, I can afford to keep it as dark as it is here, okay? Now, from there, I have gone to the second latest one. So you see, this could be already darker, but I'm still not so sure if this is not too dark. So what I will do, a little bit more water, you see, and especially here, Next to the previous here, 
that I painted, I want to check that the tone is darker. See, and this maybe even just I use the small trick and I make it darker next to it. So you see, and I also change a little bit the shape of my heel because I want to make it uh, more wavy. Yeah, so it's here. It's really, really good. No white spots left, remember. Okay, and then we move to this section here. Now, if you don't have watercolors, and it can happen, um, then use acrylic paint or tempera paint. Now, in case when you don't have neither of them, I would say try to do it using pencil. Just you have to pencil crayons or colored pencil, depends how you like to call them. Just make sure that uh, you use, um, that you press your pencils with different strengths so they can get different tones, right? Now, if you have another solution would be that um, you can choose colors similar, uh, you will call them analogous colors. So that means colors that look very similar or just follow on the color wheel, um, certain order, one coming one after another. And those colors would be, if you want to use purple, that you can use red certainly with it, you can use, um, uh, you can use blue, those three colors, and you can create three beautiful hills with it, right? Well, I'm sorry, with those colors. Okay. So you see here, I have another one, but I just want to avoid here this, this accumulation of paint. So I'm moving it with vertical lines, just down. And I'm not worried so much here uh, in this section, because I will be coming there, there very soon with my uh, colors. So you see that looks quite nice. And remember, you can use this technique uh, for any color combination that you use. It just doesn't need to be purple. It could be any color you choose, as well as it could be the colors, a um, a colors that are similar. And you can play with them, starting, let's see, with the purple, going to the purplish red, red, uh, pinkish color, and even orange, and then at the end yellow, maybe for the sky. Right? So you see here we have those beautiful, um, already one, two, three, four, four heels. And now we go with the full strength, I call it. That means very little of water, quite a bit of paint. Um, you see, and we get this darkest, the strongest, darkest, I would say, well, we can say darkest as well. You see here, here. So you really see the difference between the first and the second, and between the second and the third, the third and the fourth, the fourth and the fifth, and then we will have a sky. So you certainly can see how nicely um, the effect uh, looks like and how easily it is to achieve it. Oh, oh, I dipped my brush into blue and I don't want to have it because the blue is a little bit too cool. The one at least that I have on my palette. It's a very, very aggressive blue called Taylor blue. So depends what, even among the, the colors, like see, we have yellow colors. There are different yellows and depends what do you want to paint, you see, uh, then you make the, uh, you choose the, the proper yellow or the proper purple or the proper blue. And for our purpose here, the tail of blue is the wrong, wrong color. It's too strong. So you see here in this first yellow, I think it's a little bit, maybe even a little bit too strong. So I want to make sure that I take off some of the, of the purple color. It's a little bit too much to me. See, like this. And I don't want to keep the vertical, um, the horizontal, well, the floating lines. So I'm going with some vertical ones, but at the same time, I want to avoid the look. You see, I'm applying more water so that the paint can nicely move by itself. See, I don't want that the lines will look mechanical because we use watercolors and they have the tendency, to, I mean, they look the best when everything is nicely floating. Yes, you want to have some control, but at the same time, this control has to look like not too, not too much of it. it has to be this nice balance with the watercolors, right? Then they look really, really good. So you see here, so like I said, you can do this project by using even pencil crayons. 
Okay, there are many different options what you can do with it. Okay, so this is good. And now, oh, oh, I got some of the color there. Now I really have to change the brush because I don't want to, I don't want to have a surprise of um, having green color in case when I will apply yellow. And that's what's my intention here now. Oh, oh, that's happened here. Whoa, what is this from the brush? Okay. I also have a cut bikini. You can see bikini on all the videos that I produce. And sometimes her hair can be here too, but it was not the black hair. Okay. So here I'm coming with the beautiful yellow and I don't apply very much of the yellow uh, on the bottom part here, because I think that um, the strongest one should be on the top. So the full strength of yellow, which means little of water, lots of yellow paint on the top and there will be lighter version of it next to the mountains. And why? Because it will be too strong contrast, right? We won't really show that this section is receding back into the space. So for sure, this is, has to come forward towards us and this section has to recede back. So you see, even here I can create a stronger contrast by using, let's see, a kind of cloud. I can. I decide later on if this is what I want. Right, so you see I'm going here with the color. Like this. Maybe not, maybe just the strength will be different. And I definitely need more water going to the heels, you see? I just, I don't even use the color here. I'm just moving the paint. Making sure that I don't have white spots left at all like this okay like this and then I'm coming here see what is happening that looks quite nice I don't want to have contrast here at all so I'm going with simple just yellow moving yellow oh, like this see moving yellow and moving it here that would be fine actually i like it very much you see the contrast and you really feel that this part is coming towards us right that's what the painters um, landscape painters use uh, often with this guy intensify the colors and contrast on the top see and then getting lighter 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 a little bit of it here like almost is like the idea that if you want you can read those white spots as clouds or maybe some indication but no it's up to you if you decide right so you see i this we use also complementary pair of colors here because we use yellow and we use purple so now i will change it a little bit and i would bring some of the beautiful orange here which i have here and also in my other bucket so you see i bring a little bit of it here on one side like going lighter 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 here but just more not so much here just a little bit indication more on the other side to make it more interesting we have this big mountain here or hill so i want to have the same repeated in the same kind of um, triangle effect here on this side here so you see just to make it more interesting just a little bit of addition of the color makes such a big difference okay guys so i think that we can call our painting what do you think can we call it quit what do you think? Will it be done? Or should we still intensify it a little bit? Let's see, maybe one more time. I will come with my a beautiful color that is a little bit on the red side, but I'm, uh, do I like it? Not so much. So I'm going with my yellow again back. And that's what we do often. We have to try, find out if we like certain effect or not, and then we are done. So you see a little bit more than a little bit of our orange still here. See, just a touch, 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 touch more. See, like this. Triangle, we watch the triangle. We want to have this triangle getting lighter in this section here. And I think, oh, maybe I bring it a little, for the unity, you see, I'm bringing a little bit of this color here. Yeah, guys, and do I think we can call it quit now? That's for sure. I never can stop, you see? That's that's what I always do to myself. I always paint and paint to the last minute. I say, that's it, but it's not that's it. Not with me. And I apply some water here because I like that this will flow a little bit. And guys, what do you think? Is it done? Maybe a little bit more of it here. You see, and I think, I think that we can call it quit, yes. 
So I hope that you enjoy the process and now you are ready and now you are ready to work on your own landscape that will be showing at the atmospheric perspective as such as well as the receding into the space okay and use of the monochromatic painting effect thank you so much have a good day and see you next time bye hi guys here's madame okay and uh, i want to show you how we can improve our artworks uh, I've done this painting, watercolor painting, for you to show you how to create the depth in the painting, um, including the use of a monochromatic um, painting idea. Now, um, as you can see, this painting is fine, but it's a little bit monotone, right? Um, so what can we use here to spice it up? Well, we can create, for example, the trees that they will reset going back into the space. 